few months ago we bought my son this used IKEA kitchen for just 20 euro. It's in a pretty good state, but the wood is quite yellow and the white isn't quite white. And I was dying to make it prettier and also turn it into a functional Montessori kitchen. And now that my mom was recently visiting, I finally got time. So let's get started. If you're unfamiliar with the Montessori method, it is a type of educational method that involves children's natural interests and activities rather than formal teaching methods. It places an emphasis on hands-on learning and developing real-world skills. In this case, I'm creating a functional kitchen so that my child can practice real-life skills like washing hands, cleaning dishes and fruits on his own. It's an easy way to put him in charge, which ultimately puts both of us in a better mood and makes my son more cooperative. As you can see, I'm starting with disassembling the kitchen so that it's easier to paint. I removed the fake microwave door because I didn't actually see any use for it. I'm also removing the fake faucet because I'll be replacing it with an actual water pump. I gave it a bit of a sand, but I'm pretty sure that this step could be skipped. And then I wiped it down to prepare it for the self-adhesive paper. At first I wanted to copy my kitchen design and paint it white and make the wooden countertop. But then I decided to go for something more fun and chose the marble optic. Applying the paper was super easy. The only thing I struggled with was the corners and please do not cut them the way I'm cutting them on the video. You want to make a cut at a 45 degree angle at the corner of the countertop so that you can fold the sides neatly. Also for the sink and and stow holes, just cut it along the edges, don't do what I'm doing. I ended up redoing the countertop twice more and you'll see why. But once I was done, it was time to prepare the doors for painting. My plan is to paint the front and the sides. I also taped off the inside of the cabinet so that the wood color doesn't show when the doors are closed. I wish I used something thicker to protect the floors, like an old shower curtain. I needed to buy wood paint plus foundation. I really love the Schöner Bonnen brand, but they only had the color which I wanted, which is like pale blue, in a very big size. And I really didn't want to spend 30 euros just to repaint the kitchen. So luckily I was able to have them mix a small bottle for me of the exact color that I wanted, which only cost me five euros. I tried to paint it with a foam roller first, but quickly remembered that I actually hate it and I just swapped to using a brush. This was a very stupid beginner mistake to not elevate the shelves while painting them. You can put it on a smaller box or maybe some one-time use cups. To make painting even easier, I decided to disassemble the top, at which point I had to remove a super stubborn IKEA label. Goo Gone is very good for that, but it's quite oily, so after that I just use some alcohol-based wipes to clean the wood. I already had this cream white paint from my previous project and I used it for the top of the kitchen. As you can see, I'm just dipping the brush into the paint can, which I think is the most convenient way to paint a small wood project. I'd say that in total you won't need more than 300 milliliters of paint for the entire kitchen. I already had a gold spray at home, so I just sprayed the handles. After two layers of paint were done and dried out, it was time to assemble everything. If you have the same version of the kitchen as I do, where the top is resting on top of these metal braces, which I'm attaching right now, then you shouldn't assemble the shelf completely. As you can see, I'm only holding half of it. And there is a reason for that. There was quite some frustration involved because I assembled it in the evening, the day before, and I tried to slide it in uh, from the back and I completely destroyed the countertop and I had to redo it again. And then I tried to slide it in more carefully, but I still Still destroy the country off, so I redid it oh yet once again at which point I remembered that that is literally the definition of insanity so I decided to call it a day and went to bed and the next day I got an idea how to assemble it which is best demonstrated on the video I made some holes in the sink for the water to escape I also found these stick-on tiles in the local store for under 10 euros so I got an idea to make a backsplash for that, I cut out a piece of cardboard from the box 
that we had from our mud kitchen and then I cut the tiles to the size and just glued them on. And then I just nailed them to the back of the top shelf. Can I just take a minute to say just how many batteries you need once you have a child in your house? This is insane, like why does this stove need six batteries? I didn't glue the water pump to the table because I want to be able to easily take it out and clean the pipe that goes into the water. As to the sink, I absolutely had to fix it because my son takes it out all the time. So I used some Velcro on all four sides and this way I can still take it out and clean it, but it's hard for my son to take it out. I'm also gonna use these cabinet locks on the right cabinet to protect any water accidents. The ones I have are from Lula Safe. The package has two keys with key holders, a guide to install the lock and the two parts of the lock itself. I'm not the biggest fan of cabinet locks, but I really like these ones because you can't see them from the outside. They're very easy to install, very easy to open up. And I do think that it is very important to secure the potentially harmful cabinets with chemicals, medicine, alcohol from your children. Funny coincidence, while I was working in this kitchen, my mom found this very used baby chair. I cleaned it with a magic sponge, which is a must have if you have a child in your house. Gave it a nice good scent and painted it in matching colors and used it in the kitchen. And here is the final result. He was a bit crazy about the water for the first couple of days, but he quickly figured out that the water has a limit. And once it's over, it doesn't refill until the next day, so he kind of calmed down. Now he uses the sink to wash his hands. I do keep the soap out of his reach for now, but I plan to move it down later on. And he also uses water to fake cook pasta, which he really likes. Let me know in the comments how do you like the kitchen. Have a lovely day, support Ukraine if you can. I wish you a safe sky above your head, and I'll see you next time. Bye!